Welcome to another lecture of iadubook.com. This is lecture number 1729 relating to accountancy and today we are going to discuss about bank reconciliation statement. Now we all know that every business deposits and withdraws cash from bank account right there are several type of transactions that one can have in the bank account but I'm just taking an example of deposit and withdrawal of cash now let's say for example X limited deposits some money with the bank so when X limited prepares its cash book okay and when I say cash book I am talking about a double column cash book where you have a bank column and a cash column right so let's say this is cash column this is bank column right so when cash is deposited in the bank account let's say it is 200 rupees okay so you will debit the bank by 200 and you will credit the cash by 200 let's say this is the credit side this is the debit side this is insofar as the treatment of X limited is concerned right now the bank will also do its own accounting okay in X's book we are talking about cash book but in banks book there will be a ledger of X when the bank receives money from X it will debit cash account and it will credit X's ledger by cash 200 right we know for a matter of fact that when 200 rupees are deposited by X in the bank, the bank is also going to credit it by equal amount. At the same time, if there was any withdrawal from the bank, right, what will happen is that it is going to be debited in the cash column and it is going to be credited in the bank column. So this is withdrawal, okay, this is deposit right similarly the bank is also going to debit okay this is the debit side this is the credit side to cash 200 when it pays the withdrawal happens now normally the total of the bank column okay the total when I say I mean the net amount of the bank column in the cash book okay and if we talk about a bank book in case of a company which is not an overdraft this will always be a debit balance this debit balance should always tie up with this credit balance which the bank has but in some cases there could be some transactions okay and these transactions can be anything right which may be recorded by X but may not appear in the books of bank for any reason or vice versa if I were to give you one example, let's say suppose there is a person Y who had to pay 500 rupees to X. Okay. Now this person instead of paying it to X went and deposited it in the bank account of X. So the moment the bank receives 500 rupees from Y, it is going to increase the credit balance of X. So it will say, okay, Y 500, right? But because maybe X is not aware, he does not write anything over here. So while in the books of X, the balance is 200, in the books of bank, the balance is 700. The purpose of a bank reconciliation statement, which is normally prepared on any given date, okay, it's not that unlike a balance sheet, this need not be prepared only on 31st March or maybe 31st December, depending on when you are ending your year is to ascertain if both these balances are tying up or not if they tie it's okay if they do not tie okay there's a difference between these two accounts then a bank reconciliation statement identifies what are the reasons for differences okay and whether after considering all those differences ultimately both these balances tie up 
right? We are going to look at the differences and the reason for differences in the subsequent videos. For now, just understand that the purpose of this bank reconciliation statement is nothing but to tie up these two balances, ascertain what are the reason for differences and tie up these two numbers.